Getting jiggy with it? Is it still the millennium? Are we still in the millennium? Yeah. Um, that has never ended. It never officially started either. Wait, getting jiggy with it didn't kick off the millennium? No, Will I Am started maybe like a month or two before. Will that. I Enium? Ooh. Will I uh, Enema Im? Whoa. Eminem? That's Wait. A will I, will I Will I listen to any of them? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'll get it. Will I Eminem Enemayum? Oof. <laughs> that sounds you want a Will I Am so Eminem many ways. Enema? <laughs> Do you not? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll take one. <laughs> My name is Bradley Jones. I am Andrew Moldenauer. I'm Andy Hubert. And this is not a movie review pod pet. Oh, this is not. Brad, you gotta slow what down. What isn't it, Brad? Brad? I need to know. When you say you gotta so slow, slow down, down a little bit. I know you're excited. I know you're excited. And this is not a movie review podcast, but a podcast where we try to remember the events in a film that we've been seeing in a very, very long time. This is what we remember about Wayne's World. Were there two or three bad guys in Home Alone? And who was that forgetful fish in Finding Nemo? Join us as we're watching films. See what we remember and what memories we kill. Let's start the show. Here we go. This is what we remember. Party on. Excellent. Wayne. Yep. Wayne's World. This movie has a theme song. It, Wayne's World. Because it's based on a skit that had a theme song. Well, a sketch. What's the difference between a sketch and a skit? A skit? A skit seems like it's like a talent show. A sketch seems like something that's like written for, for you don't, something else. Do you not write stuff for talent shows? Don't you got to prepare for a talent show? I've you, never been on a talent you're show. You're just winging your, pa- have your you, talent you, show? You've never been on a talent like you're show? You're judging talent shows based on wow. no experience of being in a talent wow. show. Wow. Really putting down those talent shows. Those people work hard. Have those. you ever been in a talent show? Probably. Yeah, you. Well. <laughs> are you drunk? Were you too drunk to remember? Probably. <laughs> so this movie opens with them filming an episode of their show. Yep. I forget what they're saying. I know I f- what the gist is. But eventually they finish their show and then Wayne starts to talk to us, the, the viewer. Wait, aren't they like. Don't. Uh, maybe I'm thinking of a totally different episode, but aren't they like doing something with like a hair cutting machine with. A vacuum. And it happens like, like way later. It does. Okay, uh, I'm getting it yeah. mixed up. That's okay. Like, or, or does that? Maybe they already in the start of a sketch. Either that's in the very beginning. That could be. And or, it's like sucking his brain out. Or, or it's like something that the producer guy sees much later on. The... Oh yeah, I think Rob Lowe is watching that sketch on the TV. Okay. And yes. that's what gets his okay. interest that in, could be. in them. That, yes. is, that is what happens. Okay. But okay, so they they're ending a show pretty much at I believe the beginning. So. Yeah. And Mike Myers addresses the camera. He kind of like Ferris Bueller's us into his world. Tells us tells us about you know who Garth is and Aurora Illinois and yep all and this his other stuff. Ex girlfriend or the oh yeah comes later. oh she's somebody famous Selma Blair. No. No, 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 nope. not Selma Blair. No, no, no. Uh, I have no idea. No, 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 it's going to come from me. He's okay, so okay, okay, okay. We've got, okay. We got time keep, to think about it. Keep going on, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. Blur it out. She, she looks like uh, a girl from the Clueless movie, but she's also not that person. <laughs> uh, so they, they're they going to a concert that night. They all go down. Oh, he, he, takes, he says he's going to take the long way or something like that. Uh-huh. Like, and then he goes down the elevator, or they go down an elevator, and we follow Mike Myers. I remember who it is. It's Laura Flynn Boyle. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, from Twin Peaks. Yep. Mm-hmm. Did she actually have a boil ever? She had know? a Flynn, but not a boil. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to a concert at some grungy warehouse. They sing the Queen song. Yep. yep. Classic. That's uh, like the biggest moment of the movie, I feel like. It's like right oh, yeah. the beginning. Yeah. That's without a doubt, like the iconic scene for the film. Scaramouche. They Scaramouche. Say, yep, they sing Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Yes. But, okay, before they get to the concert, do they stop at the donut shop? Do they see Ed O'Neill? Is there a scene where they're... I know that's like... A, maybe they stop afterwards, but... Ed O'Neill's running a donut shop in the film. He's like a conspiracy theorist. No, he's like he's like saying all these like weird things. You know, <laughs> I don't know if he's like a cons- a conspiracies, but he just talks. He's an he extreme talk- talker. He talks like the guy from Unsolved Mysteries. He, he does. He, he, he kind of talks like him. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. He's really funny though. Yes, yeah, so really funny. And all the donuts 
look good because like all food and all movies. What am I saying? Okay, all food and movies look delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Did I still say that correctly? I don't know. Even the uh, I'm giving you some applause. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they finally get to the concert, and there's a babe. Tia, Total babe. Tia, Tia Carrera. Yeah. Carrera. Something like that. Just playing girl named Cassandra. I forget if she has a last name or not. And that's the first dream we were. Yeah. It's the first time we see like Wayne totally just lose his mind. Yep. Now, do they a lady. when they first get into the concert? Is that when they do like the swing overload where they're swinging all the ladies that are in that concert? No, uh, that happens later. Later, okay. That I couldn't remember later. when that happens. You guys are that might even be in Wings World too. Oh which, god! Which would be no, like, no, no. They're like swinging girls in the first one. <laughs> That's such a great phrase. <laughs> you kind of said it first. I did. <laughs> no, but there is a moment where uh, Wayne's girlfriend is like zeroing in on him, and there's like this like creepy music that's playing. <laughs> yeah, he's, like trying to get him get his attention. Oh man! And, he, and she and she ends up getting Garth's attention, I think. And they end up not like having a weird conversation. Garth says that she's trying too hard or something like that. She gives him some advice, but it never doesn't work out. Okay. Wayne meets up with Cassandra at this point. I think yeah. Or like no. after the show, he tries to talk to her. He's like telling her that she did a really good job and yeah, learn some things about her. Yeah. And I think she invites him to another show. Yeah, I can see that. I yeah, think okay. so. that, sounds, that sounds good to me. Yeah. Does she know about the Wayne's World show? Because, like, in Chicago, his show is fairly popular, right? I, is she aware of who he I is? I, I think she is, know. actually. I don't know. I think she's somewhat aware of him. Well, if she isn't, then she's not. <laughs> yeah, I would <laughs> And let's move on. All right, let's go. So, in the next scene, I don't know what happens that leads up to Rob Lowe seeing this show. I think he's just hanging out with some broad, and he is working for uh, Brian Doyle Murray, Yeah, uh, his character, right. who runs an arcade store or arcade shop. Yep. And he ends up seeing the Wayne's World, and he wants to put him on network TV, I guess, or something like that. Like, yeah. And then sponsor, yeah, like, and then have that arcade be the sponsor of the show. And I think he's, like, trying to take control over the show. Yeah, it's that, like that's new, ultimately... It's like the new hip thing. He's right. trying to change, like, yeah, there's a whole, like, I, they build a set that's just their garage. Yes, but it's, it's like, the exact same, it's like, you said, but yeah, it's just in the studio. So they end up agreeing to shoot their pilot or whatever with them. And they just, like, they're in, like, a weirdo land where everything is just not correct, but is. And they do that green screen shot of Delaware. That's funny. That's a good bit. <laughs> <laughs> you really sound I'm just good. naming, like, things Brad. that happen in the film now. Because yeah. the order of, of how they get to where they're going is a little confusing to me. It's very confusing. Like, Wayne is, like, he's in a relationship, but he's, like, interested in this other girl. And yeah, that's kind of his his story. story. And there's even the, uh, where they're playing um, hockey. Like, him and Garth are playing hockey, and she rides by on her bike, and she, like, hits a car and totally oh, yeah, she, out. Oh, yeah, she definitely, like, biffs it over that car. <laughs> and she, for the rest of the movie, she has, like, a neck brace on or yeah. something. <laughs> But she's all real positive. I, th- I feel bad for her. I, I'm, I'm a Laura Flynn Boyle fan there, of this film. There is one weird moment. Like, it's it's Wayne's birthday, and she ends up getting him a gun rack, and he's like, <laughs> all right. He's like, I don't own... I don't own a... Her. He's like, I don't own a gun, let alone many to necessitate a rack. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, don't look a gift gun rack in the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's gonna give you one. I mean, that's just... I, I do remember feeling a little bad because he was kind of a dick to her even was. though she, yeah, she, she remembered his birthday and got him a gift. Like, even if it wasn't something you wanted, you, you could have just been like, well, thanks for yeah, that. Yeah, you that's say, nice. oh, thanks. And then, you know, you put it in the closet and forget about it. Yeah. Don't be or, a dick. Or re-gift it to a gun nut. <laughs> yes. So what, what happened, things get on like a rocky road because Wayne has Brian Dole Murray's character on his show as a guest, but he ends up writing uh, terrible things about him on the back of his cue cards. And he's like, never used cue cards before. So he like makes a note that's like sphincter boy and there's like an arrow pointing towards him. And <laughs> he's just making fun of the guy who's like sponsoring him. Yes. And he's just okay. doing whatever he wants. And Wayne is trying to rebel against his show being corporatized or whatever. They have the bit where like, they're complaining about the sponsorships in the show and they're like they're eating wearing Domino's pizza. Yep. And drinking wearing, a Pepsi. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. They're wearing some sort of like apparel, yep. Adidas or something like yeah. that. Yeah. A whole like yeah, head to foot thing. We have, there's the scene in the music store 
where they go... Yeah, once they get the paid, they're getting paid to do this show, and they get big checks, and they never had this much money before, so Wayne gets a sweet guitar, Garth puts in a, 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 a Twizzler rope, a dispensary right. on the top of his car. <laughs> nice. I don't, I don't remember that. Mm-hmm. Yep, I do remember that. And they also get free tickets to see Alice Cooper. Right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Garth meets up with a, a super babe, and uh, they play Foxy Lady. In the Shit, donut that's shop. in the donut shop, yeah. It's in the donut shop. Uh-huh. She like comes to the donut shop. And I think it even like zooms in on Garth to the point where like the camera hits him, or he, <laughs> yes, falls, where yes. he like falls off the. Because uh, the Tia Tia's like, why don't you just go talk to her? Talk to her. Why don't you talk go to talk her. to her? Talk, talk to her. her. <laughs> and it's like, warp. It's like the the frame is like kind of warping, and then he's just like, then it goes into the Foxy Lady song, and I think that's yeah, that's when the camera hits him. Okay, it comes back to reality. Right. I'd be remiss to not mention Kurt Fuller is in this film, the bad guy from Ghostbusters Two. Plays like Rob Lowe's lackey, yeah, who ends up like yeah, that's end, right. up, end up being a friend to Wayne near the end of the film, but at the beginning he's kind of a <laughs> jerk, and he's kind of like the producer of the show. So he gets the guitar. They so they go to the concert money. too. They go to the see the Alice Cooper. Oh, so Alice Rob Cooper. Lowe sets up uh, Wayne and Garth with these tickets in order for him to get alone time with. As she's Tia recording Carrera. that, is she well, okay? Is he getting alone time just to like hang out with her? Or I is it like so. alone time to shoot her music video? I think the I think the movie ends with the music video thing. Okay, so he's getting alone time with her just to kind of schmooze up to her, but she's not really. Yeah. In, well, I don't know. She's like sort of interested, but not no, sure. She, well, yeah, it's too it's too hard to say whether yeah. her intentions were being led that way or not. But that, I, think, I think at the Alice Cooper thing is might might be where they get back safe passes, and that's where they do the swing thing to girls as they're walking. That away. would make sense. Yeah, and they talk to Alice Cooper, and Alice Cooper like says something really poignant. He, like he talks about um, Aurora, like Chicago's um, being brought up in like by Indians or like a native people or something like that, like the Algonquin tribe. And he goes on. <laughs> Information and everyone in the Alice Cooper band's like crazy smart. Yeah, he's just like, I think like they're just like right on. <laughs> <laughs> and they leave the concert and they meet up with Chris Farley, who is a valet he's for a limo driver or something for like a bigger wig guy that I think he's the manager of Alice Cooper's band or whatever. And then he ends up like shooting he's up like all these TV these... producer or something like that. He's some something big. Yeah, he's he's he produces a lot of different things. And then he Chris Farley just spits out a bunch of useless information. That Wayne says, this is probably going to be useful later, or whatever. He like, calls it out. That, <laughs> yeah. And that he was going to be at uh, certain times. Well, wait. We, we also can't jump over, just to acknowledge it, the, the weird, like, Laverne and Shirley montage oh, yeah. before when the, when the concert. Oh, yeah. When they're going to Milwaukee. Yeah. That, <laughs> that would be sad if we missed that. Yeah. What are we doing? We have Alice Cooper tickets. Oh, we got t- tickets to Alice Cooper. <laughs> so there's a lot of really fun parody scenes, and that's that's one of them. In Wayne's World 2, they parody Jurassic Park in a great way, but... Mm. Parodies, you know, they're not done subtly anymore. Like, I feel like in Wayne's World, they were really well-crafted and didn't ever say they welcome. This came and went. They felt, like, super appropriate, too. Yep, like, for the storyline. Yeah, yeah characters. exactly. They don't feel shoehorned. They really, they do yeah. flow. I feel like they just flow really well. There's a few moments in this film. One's kind of just innocuous in the beginning, and later comes back, where Wayne and Garth are sitting on their car while airplanes are flying over their head, and they're trying to have conversations, and you're not quite getting the whole thing where they yeah. stop and uh <laughs> there's a scene there's near the end of it they're like having a fight and they and, they do, and garth's like you know what i think of you this is what i think of you and he just says a bunch of things while the airplanes flying over him and you can't really hear <laughs> and he ends with something like nose brain or something yeah really funny and they storm off so there's a divide happening between wayne and garth through th- uh through this part of the film do they play like an rem song there like everybody hurts or something like that <laughs> I feel like that's a moment that that would happen. I don't know. I don't think they do. So where so where does the the conflict between the two of them come from? Uh, so he's obsessed, or Garth doesn't want the corporatization, and he's like kind of feeling left out as a friend. Okay. Because Wayne's just trying to get with Cassandra, and he like doesn't see that Rob Lowe's character is um, trying to get with her. Take over. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. She's like blinded to the fact that these things are happening around him, and Garth calls him on it. Gotcha. And then yeah, and then there's a moment, it. too, where um, Wayne, like, walks out of a show, and they're live, and, like, Garth has to, like, continue, like, running the show, but he's not that, he's, like, the side, yeah, like, the sidekick, basically, and he wants to be that role, he doesn't want to be the host of the show, and then I think, like, Rob Lowe's like, well, you could be the face of the show, or whatever, and it's it's a small scene, but, like, 
I think that happens right before the plane scene because he's like really ticked off that he left the show. He's yeah. like, you're abandoning like what we're doing. I think there's a scene where Gar's drinking out of like a giant uh, cocktail. And I forget what the context of that is, but it's really funny. And he even like, oh, like he keeps missing the straw or something. Like yeah, that. he keeps missing the straw, and also he, he like brings the camera down under the table and talks to him. That's during signing the contract. Yeah, about the with contract and things happening. Uh, yeah, he, he's got some bad. Uh, He's feeling some bad mojo off of Rob Lowe. Do you think it was Garth that was feeling bad mojo, or was yeah. it Wayne? Could, no, Garth addresses it in that scene. Okay. That he thinks everything is just too good to be true. Right, because he takes the camera underneath the t- table. It's like mm-hmm. the first moment where it's like in his POV. Yeah. Yep. I think even like, references like a Twilight Zone episode where like something like that happened. Yeah. I'm curious to find out what Twilight Zone episode yeah, is because no, I've seen every single one of them. You are a Twilight Zone aficionado. <laughs> yeah. So we can talk about that yeah. <laughs> when we come to part two. Make sure you write down that note. <laughs> yes. They end up breaking up at some point and they end up getting back together. They are trying to... They have to sneak into their old their, their old place or something like that. They have to get keys. There's a part where like Kurt Fuller joins up with uh, Garth and Wayne's friends. and They're in a van. And they're trying to do something. So what they're trying to do is broadcast their show to uh, oh, yeah. the, the limo drive, the limo, the guy in the limo, whoever he is. Uh, you never see his face. Mr. Big or something like that. Yeah, Mr. Big. They're trying to broadcast it into his limo so that he can watch their show. Um, in order to, I don't. Oh, no, oh in order to show um, that that song that uh, Tia Tigger plays at the end. Yeah. Of the What's the cover to... of a uh, Ramon song? Um, right? It's definitely a cover. I can't remember which one it is. Yeah, I don't know. But they're they're trying to show off... Ballroom Blitz. Ballroom Blitz by Sweet. I was, I was, I was singing in my head until I got to that chorus. Yes. I was a little quiet there, but I was trying to get there. <laughs> Ballroom Blitz. That's by Sweet. I know that. S- what, Kurt Keith Sweet? No, Keith Sweat? the band is called Sweet. Anyway. So they're trying to broadcast in a limo to get the guy to see it. To, to be able to sign her to okay. his label or something like that. I think he's like a music producer. Ah. Which would make sense because he's at yeah. the Alice Cooper show. Everything's falling apart and Wayne's trying to put it back together and resolve everything. Right. Yes. Before we get to the Scooby-Doo endings, yep. what are some things that happen? Um, if we can think of anything. Yeah, so at uh, the donut shop, there's a secret door that has just ninjas training in it. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> That's like one of my favorite parts yeah, of the entire movie. Really good. Garth, I think, like plays drums really well, and like Dana Carvey himself is a yep. great drummer. This yeah, is, the guy says, "Wow, happens. you're really good." <laughs> and the music. That's also like the scene where play. Wayne starts to play Stairway, Stairway to, Heaven. to Heaven, and the guy's like, "All right, read the sign." And it says, "No playing Stairway to Heaven." <laughs> no Stairway. No Stairway. Which is apparently like based on a real thing. Like there was a guitar. I read this in the trivia a while ago. There was a guitar shop in London. Where everybody came there and started playing Stairway to Heaven, and they had to put a sign up that said, "No <laughs> Stairway to Heaven." <laughs> That's so good. It's a really weird inside joke to have inside of that. Film. It is, yeah. And I, re- I remember, like, it doesn't even sound like he starts playing Stairway to Heaven. I'd have to go back and listen to yeah, it. Listen good. to Stairway to Heaven. I feel like that, that was the only way the scene would work if he actually. I did. know, but I feel like it was like such a short amount of time that you don't even really get. He Stairway plays a few to Heaven bars. He plays like it. three or four bars. All right, I'm, we'll I, find I'm out. I'm saying it happens. It. No, I, I believe it happens. I just, I want to go back and. Rewatch it, figure it out. Well, that's the point yeah. of the podcast. Is that's it? That's why we do the podcast. Is it, Brad? We try to remember the things that we saw at movies that we haven't seen in a very, very long time. Oh, and then okay. we watch the films and then see what we got right and see and what we, we should, got wrong. We should mention it like the beginning or right something. Right at the start so, of yeah. the podcast. Okay, well, we can start mentioning it. Yeah, well, from this point on, okay. we'll put like an intro. I don't listen forward. to the intro, though. Yeah. I skip it. It's really boring. I don't There's know, like so. that 15 minute skip button on my. That's a 15 just, second skip button. Or 15 seconds, I mean. And I'm just like, skip, 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 skip. Yeah. And then I start the podcast. Yeah. A side conversation, I use that all the time. And I feel like the ads that people. I'm, I, we don't have ads on our podcast. We wish we did. And if we did, you could skip them. But man, do I skip every ad that I, yeah. I just don't listen to anything. Yep. Or skip the intros. I skip a lot of intros. I hope you guys like our theme song because it's short and sweet. But if you skip it, I like the theme and song. It's, I don't. It's also it. you, it's it's convenient too because you could skip back. And I feel like YouTube needs that function. Everything needs that function. YouTube, like, yeah, YouTube, like videos on Facebook, they need that fifteen second like skip back back or uh, forward or back in those videos because you can just like miss things that you want to just go back and listen to. But I don't know. It's the slider bar can be a little more like. 
It, yeah, it could be a little fussy sometimes. A one click would be, yeah, be nice. I think you can use the function keys to like skip minutes on, on YouTube videos, but I mean, I would. I don't Especially know if like really if you're list really if you're known. watching like a video on YouTube that could be like an hour and a half, and I've done that plenty of times. If you want to just like go back a little bit, you could be like clicking right next to the button, that little circle, and going back minutes. And if you're using your phone, I mean, getting your finger on that yes, line. Yes, that's drag like back the, is the biggest reason to use it. It's for your phone. Yeah. So Wayne's World, part yeah, time. Yeah, what were we talking about? Oh, were we talking about Wayne's World this week? So let's yeah. get to the Scooby Doo endings. Okay. Yeah. So the first ending is a bad ending where the guy doesn't want to sign Wayne and um, terrible things like the. And then yeah, it's a bad and ending. Tia's like, "You ruined my career," or something like that. Yeah, and everything then goes, goes off with Rob Wayne. Lowe. Mm -hmm. Even like, I think even the girlfriend comes back to like slap him in the face or something like that. Yeah. Nothing goes right. And then they do the Scooby Doo ending because they do the diddly doots. Biddly -doo, biddly -doo, biddly -doo, biddly -doo. And the guy comes in, and then Rob Lowe is actually an old man in disguise. And I think it's blue from old school. I think it's that. It old is. Man. It oh, is. man. Who is the end of. Uh, he's also, I think he's in like um, The Wedding Singer as well. He's in, uh, he's like the drunk old guy. Okay. In like one short scene in The Wedding Singer. And they do another ending, they do the good ending. And the the big guy comes and everything works out and Cassandra gets signed and Rob Lowe gets kicked out or whatever and do they do a third everything ending? Everything works out. That's it. They that's, just do the two endings. One. Yeah, they don't they don't clue clue you or anything. I could have swore they did a third ending. Maybe in like a special edition or something like that, but there's nothing okay. that I could think of. Well, I mean, we can rest assured that Brad will find ending. it if it exists because he watches every single Brad, extra you, bit you of Brad, you got to tell on. us if it exists. Is this Mike Myers' first film? Or did So I Married Next Murder come out before That this? came out and it even a year before, before that. It came out a year before. And I don't know if he was in anything else before then. What about the first Sarah Night Live film? Did this, was this the first one? Or did Coat Hands come after? Or did The first Saturday Night Live film did could have been like Blues Pat? Brothers? or You consider, were they... Blues Brothers were a SNL yeah. I thought I, I thought that came after the movie. I thought they were on SNL after they were... No, so that. Blues Brothers so. came out in 1980. They started doing that bit in like 77, 78. Okay. I think that would have been the first one. What about the It's Pat movie? That came out like 94. What 95. about Stewart Saved His Family? Same year. <laughs> it came out the same year? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. When, Wings World 2 came out, what, four years after this one? No, it came out the next year. Ladies Man? That came out like 2000. Night of the Roxbury? 98. <laughs> We're gonna, oh, let's go to check all these dates. We're going to see. I bet Andy's got them all correct. He's got them all nailed. Yeah, it's his thing. It's his thing. Coneheads. 93. Uh, and that one, like, feature... <laughs> 2008, 9? <laughs> the Coneheads one featured, like, a ton of SNL cast members. Yeah, this one didn't have any but Chris Farley. Oh, does Phil Hartman have, like, a cameo in this movie? Maybe. But I think I remember hearing out of all the SNL movies... When I say SNL movies, I don't mean like SNL produced because I don't think the Blues Brothers was produced by SNL. I think Wayne's World, out of all like the SNL produced ones, was like the only like one to do well in mm -hmm. the box office. All the other ones, I think, failed. Yeah, I think Coneheads broke even or did well. Yeah, but apparently, like this one, Wayne's World, did yeah, the this best. definitely this was is like, the success. Yeah, this thing was in pop culture like crazy. People yeah. were quote, yeah. quoting this oh, film. Oh man, this film was huge. Yeah, and the the TV show Step by Step, the characters like parodied Wayne and Garth. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a fantastic movie. It is. It's really good. I I, I, I want to bring up the movie Stay Tuned, which which has an evil version of Wayne and Garth in it. And it's like a movie where John Ritter goes to hell and there's like parodies of TV shows <laughs> and one of them is Wayne and Garth. I remember you talked about this before. Yeah, I, I still love, want to see it. It's a great movie, but there's like there's like zombie Wayne and zombie Garth and they terrorize John Ritter. It's Are they actually great. like the, the actors no, though? No. 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 Can we watch this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want to see it. Yeah. But I was just trying to make the point that, I mean, this, these characters were real popular. I didn't yeah. even know what to compare them to now. Yes. I, I'm trying to think. I, I, I don't know. What are their equivalents? Is there a Day? Wayne's World, Wayne and Garth equivalent to this day and age? Pum, Andy pum. Samberg and Justin <laughs> Okay, Timberlake. join us in part two when we talk about Wayne's World. <laughs> I'm, I'm stopping at Andy Samberg. <laughs> <laughs>
Although Hot Rod was okay. Sometimes I wish I could boldly go where no man's gone before. But I'll probably stay in Aurora. What are you thinking about? Cassandra. She's a fox. In France, she would be called La Renard, and she would be hunted with only her cunning to protect her. She's a babe. She's a robo-babe. In Latin, she would be called Babia Majora. If she were a president, she'd be Babraham Lincoln. Did you ever find Bugs Bunny attractive when he'd put on a dress and play a girl bunny? No. <laughs> no. Neither did I. I was just asking. Welcome back to the number one rated movie podcast on iTunes. This Not. Oh. oh. Oh, no, Wade's no, World. Wade's World. What are you talking about, Borat? <laughs> did you not? Did you want uh, Borat instead of Wade? I'm pretty World? sure this movie got it from Borat, guys. <laughs> That's not true. What? But my husband. <laughs> <laughs> I did What's read that Borat? that joke came from this movie, and I didn't realize that. Really. Or at least that's what that's what the internet said. Well, we all know how dumb they can be. I mean, they let us put a podcast up there, right? That's true. Wayne's World came out in 92, Coneheads 93, It's Pat 1994, Stuart Seagull's Family 95, Roxbury 98, I forgot about Superstar. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. 99, Ladies Man was 2000, and then we had McGruber in 2008, and then nothing since. Was I, like, accurate with a lot of you had You had uh, Stuart Saves His Family and It's Pat coming out the same year as Wayne's World oh. 2, and they were not. Okay. You just had, you were one-off. Well, that's, a, that's, that's the rule. Those I are think. also oh. movies that people have never seen. <laughs> right. <laughs> Those were the produced Saturday Night Live um, under the Paramount banner. Blues Brothers came out under the Universal banner. Blues Brothers even like a SNL produced movie? It was uh, not like, really. Okay. It was a Universal Studios film. Got it. Okay. Essentially. Um, Touchstone Pictures worked on these films. And the opening of the film had that like iconic noise. I haven't, maybe I haven't seen a Paramount film in a long time. But it opened on with the mountain. Yeah, yeah I, I was actually going to mention that. I was like the classic kind of Paramount intro that, yeah. like from way back. I haven't seen that in a long time. I've yeah. seen it. Yeah, it was the noise is very iconic to me. Yep. Right out of the gate, Rob Lowe is hanging out with the babe watching the movie. We got that wrong. That happens yeah. like right from the get go. That's like yep. Yeah. yeah, we're pretty much like introduced him right away. The movie goes quick, and that yeah, girl like it's an eighty minute film. The girl had like she was just like a fling, I guess, or like a. I, yeah, I don't know what purpose she really he, served. Yeah, he was just sleeping with her. Eye yep. candy. I guess, I guess it's like the demographic. We want that person. I don't know. Does Rob Lowe get all of his decisions based off the floozies he sleeps with? <laughs> I don't know. But he was definitely like trying to get into everybody's pocket. Yeah. He was just like true. talking every single person up. Well, why do you think he's so successful at his job, Andy? Yeah. I think he has a lot of debt. I think there's something secret to his character where he needs to be making a lot of money. You think so? I think he's like really he's a that lo- fancy apartment. I feel like he's like a lonely guy. He's really a lonely guy and he's trying not to we show need, it. We need a movie about him and his character. I thought about that same thing life. about the ex or Lorson Boyle. Yeah. I yeah. Was- I think her story is very interesting to I be did like too, actually. to be like destroyed by Wayne essentially, and Wayne even admits it. And when she's talking, when he's talking Cantonese with Cassandra, that he feels responsible for like essentially destroying her psyche. Right. <laughs> yeah, and we also like I didn't. She she basically or he broke up with her a while ago. Yeah, I thought that she was still the like. Started. You said ex girlfriend. Oh, we did had I? Her. You did, but then you went back and yeah. talked about it like she, like she wasn't. I wasn't. I was on the fence, but I didn't know that. But she yep. is his ex girlfriend. Yes. Prior to the film starting. Yeah. yeah. Two months She's obsessed before, with yeah. him. She's, she has a Wayne necklace. I thought that was kind of cute. Yeah. I thought that was things. good. Uh, nailed the bit about the gun rack, though. Yeah. I, I, that that's happens. just something, yeah, I totally remember. And I did read that that actually happened to Mike Myers. Yeah. <laughs> he had a had a girlfriend at the time that gave him a gun rack, but it was supposed to be meant as a joke. Oh, okay. But he didn't appreciate it. <laughs> and so then he wrote it into the movie. <laughs> Just to make fun of her, and she was kind of mad about it. Yeah, he you know, tried to apologize. Wow. To be honest, that's kind. Of, he's kind of an asshole move to do that. It is. I, I, an I, was, asshole move. I was reading that he's bad. kind of an asshole. Yeah, all, all the trivia in this film saying was from the director, who also did Little Rascals. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Ooh. 
how the mighty have whatever. This came out before Little Rascals, so it's not fallen even. Well, he fell into fell Little at, Rascals. He fell into Little Rascals. <laughs> yeah, that he was. He He's stayed in like this a trailer drama a lot. queen. He's a little diva. Yeah. And he was maybe resentful because he didn't want um, Dana Carvey, or he didn't want it to be a two person act to begin with. And like Dana Carvey kind of like took it, took over some of the spotlight. Hmm. Particularly as Garth, but I think that so. was saying that like he, that like when they first started the skit in the first place on SNL, like he didn't want them to participate. Yeah, he didn't want Wayne's World to be its own thing. Just him. yeah. Um, when they went to uh, when they went to the Gasworks place, did you guys notice that Meatloaf was the? Uh, yeah, the yeah, I did. I, I actually have Meatloaf question mark. Uh, it it, it was, was totally Meatloaf. So I got it wrong. I thought this movie they were already in a warehouse. That's Wayne's World too. They're in just in their parents' basement. At the start of this one. Oh, yeah. But you never see any parents. <laughs> Correct. Right. Documentary style filmmaking, him like talking to the camera, like Ed O'Neill addresses it. And uh, <laughs> uh, do you think there, someone's making a documentary about him and we we're watching that documentary? I, I, I don't like, know. I feel like that was an idea going into the film and then they just sort of used it when they wanted they, to. Or, or they forgot about it. Like they were, they started doing it and they had like some bits written in and then kind of forgot about it. But. I yeah. did really like when Ed O'Neill took over the camera and he's like, wait a second, this is my movie. Yeah. And I took it back. <laughs> that was good. And I did, this is the first time, I've seen this movie so many times, this is the first time I noticed that the old man is in the donut shop at the beginning, the Scooby-Doo guy. Yeah. And he even oh. referenced, how's that carnival going, Mr. Withers? That was his name. <laughs> and it's like, he's like, it's fine. He turns around and he starts eating his donut again. It's like... That took the time to foreshadow that, and I'd never noticed it ever in my life that that was a thing. Huh. You got the name of Cassandra's band? Uh, no, What's I missed What's the name it. of Cassandra's oh, band? Oh, I didn't even pay attention to it. I, I just is watched it, this literally like two hours. I had the subtitles it's not, on. It's not the shitty Beatles. No, no that was one of the no, other bands they're that terrible. was playing. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, I think okay. this is a good trivia question. It's, it's very obscure, so you're not going to like pull Okay, it all right. They're called Crucial Taunt. Crucial Taunt. Uh, that's a weird. That's a weird band name. Uh, yeah, it's hard to remember. That is really weird. Very odd to me. It's it's, it's not not for me. It's not my kind of band name. It's good. And they basically but... just played covers. They had no original songs. <laughs> I probably leave it at the end. But why would he? Why would she try to get Mr. Big's attention with a cover? It's just like a karaoke style thing. Like she should play I mean, an original song for him. You think so? Yeah. Yeah, but like I guess they were kind of showing off their talents. Like she's a really good singer overall, and she has a lot of like appeal. So did crucial? Did she tour ever? I kind of would have liked to have seen that. Her touring? Yeah, T. Care on tour. Well, what do we get in the second one? Don't we get some? Of, we don't get any of that. Yeah, she still has a band though because yeah. she plays Wayne Stock. And that's like oh, a, that's, like yes. a, that's like a whole thing that happens. I don't know. I don't know if they actually... Well, what we gather from there being three endings, which was another thing. I think we said that there was we only sure two. There was no, two three. no, we said there were three, but you kept saying there were two. Ooh, <laughs> I, did, I just listened to the podcast. All right. Oh, and, I, I, and I said the, the bad ending, the Scooby-Doo ending, and the good ending. And you're like, oh, there are only two? And I, and I never corrected you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was but asking I, you a question then. But I had said all three. The answer is you were wrong. You weren't listening. <laughs> I didn't know. No, that was because I didn't know there was a Scooby Doo ending. I totally forgot about that. Oh yeah, you you combined those into one ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know what that was. Mm-hmm. You did nail the sound effect for the Scooby Doo ending, though. I think in the first. Half. <laughs> yeah, the fingers. Yes. Uh, Garth's taser. Forgot about that scene. Yeah, where uh, a bully like picks on Garth and he goes to his he car. Goes to his car and gets that. That was such a goofy scene. Like, what is the, this them. is just establishing that he can like do technical stuff, I guess. Yeah. So that later but, he can like hack the satellites to Mr. Big's I, I think they, yeah. they wanted to pay for that Mission Impossible song because they use it twice in the film. So I think they were trying uh, to milk that. It could be. Well, because they also made the mechanical arm that was supposed right. to like go after. Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe, I guess, but that wasn't even really fully thought out. Yeah, that, no. I kind of enjoyed that scene. I, I thought that, that scene was, was funny. Time really, like, just beats it with a hammer. Yeah. Like, that was funny. Where does Wayne get the money to produce his show? His public access show? The cameras they are using are so expensive. I, it the looked like they, I mean, they going. had the truck out front with the dish on top. Like I assumed it's like something you, they, they took maybe from the public access yeah. station on a like They're a probably weekly renting basis. it out or something. It's, it's, it's a high... Value production. I mean, I know, like at the show. public access station around here, even you just, you just have to go and take a course, and then you can like use their equipment for free. What if you're producing yeah. stuff for the that you'll air on their station? 
So well, well, GD, <laughs> let's do that. I assume maybe like the guys running the cameras because we never really get to know them. They have a, f- a few. Like, I like them a, a lot. Moments, but... <laughs> One guy looked like Will Forte. <laughs> I was like, that's I, weird. I had to look them up because I was like, are these guys like in a band or something like that? Like, who are they? And they're all just like actors and other stuff, but they haven't huh. done a, a ton those of movies. Guys. Yeah, I thought the crew was pretty funny. Like they had some good bits where they're just sort of in the background laughing at everyone else. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just uh, the "I love you, man" guy. Yeah, and then there's the guy who, like flirts with uh, Brian Dolmar's uh, wife. Yeah, and then there's the guy that's always sick or yeah, like, just throwing up yes. or whatever. Uh, Hung over. He, he has some weird moments. They're, like they're picking him up at the beginning, and he just I don't know. I didn't really get his uh, his whole whole deal. His thing, it was like but, he was perpetually hungover almost. Yeah, there's a part where they pick up their like broken car from him, and there's a pretty funny scene where they're like they're trying to pay him with pocket change. Yes, but and Garth does like scratches that other car with the torque <laughs> wrench. <laughs> it was almost like an unnecessary scene. I feel like <laughs> there's a few unnecessary scenes. It, it, it but helped him funny. get. It helped him get out of the scene. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because then he was able to say, "We gotta go." Cut. <laughs> like <laughs> they got stuck in a scene that they didn't want to be in. <laughs> The meat, the meat of the movie feels like it's broken up with like sketches, essentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially like the Laverne and Shirley thing. Like I really love that, but it, it kind of it's funny. It comes out of nowhere, Excuse and they they take they take it for a little bit. I have a confession. I have a huge crush on Shirley. I had a huge crush on her as a kid, and I still do now. The girl who played Shirley. And who is the one that played Shirley? Not that not not Penny, Penny Marshall. Not Penny Marshall. <laughs> I don't. I can't. I honestly. I don't know what yeah, she looks like. Yeah, she's just like. a cute little brunette girl who was. Hmm. She's really funny, and she had a bunch of stuff. It's not a show that I really watched as a kid, yeah. or ever. Squiggy and. Um, yeah, Michael McKean's Michael in McKean's it. Michael McKean's got some. Yeah. moments. it's a fun show. Okay. You guys, you I, I trust you. Running Shirley fans <laughs> out there. <laughs> it's like two broke girls before two broke girls with two broke girls. Wait, say that again? Exactly. <laughs> so, um, we forgot about the one through five count that they make. Like, like they spend, oh, yeah. They spend oh. about five minutes of the movie explaining to them about the five count to start the show. We also forgot about the Terminator scene. Yeah. That, yes, I totally scene. forgot about that. I that thought like that a, was really funny, actually. I really right. I liked that a lot. Yeah, we misappropriated uh, the rope, uh, uh, the Twizzle Rope car. That's in the second movie, not in this one. There's a few mistakes where we just, no, like, had, thought... Well, there was a thing. Twizzler rope. Yeah. Oh, was it? Yeah. 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 He, like, pulled a piece down and cut it off from the roof of the oh, car okay. and ate it. Yeah. There was another thing we got from Wayne's World 2 that um, bled into this one. I'm mm-hmm. forgetting what it is now. This was his first film, so So I Married an Next Murder came out yeah, after this Yeah, I was definitely wrong with that. Yeah, it was his first, first film, and... It's weird to be a diva in your first movie, you know? To, like, exactly. Really, like, yeah, that is kind of weird. Demands and, he, like, like, had, like, he even had all these demands about um, Bohemian Rhapsody being like the song that they sing in the beginning. And he told the studio like he wouldn't do the movie unless it was that song. Like, huh. I'm so surprised that he had that much power. I was going to say, was he yeah, that really. huge on SNL at the time? Like, that not, was... Not really. Yeah, like, it's so strange. Dana Carvey was was on a, was more expected and had a longer tenure, I think. Huh. Yeah. There's a Scanners reference, which I always enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, they think Garth's head's going to explode. Yep. And a costume, and he's just like, uh, <laughs> yeah, you think it's going to happen. It does like, sound going to happen. <laughs> like the six people that saw the movie Scanners around that time. <laughs> uh, Wayne walks off the set, and that's what really starts the wedge. Yeah, between him and Garth, they but, did, but they, it lasts for all of like five minutes. It does. It's, it's like it's, it's like a really two quick. Minute, he just says, "Hey, there's, want to be friends again?" Like, there's all right. There's only one scene that separates it, where like he, like Rob Lowe's talking about to Cassandra. Like, have you seen Wayne? And, and like they're just back together again, like right after that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there wasn't a whole. I mean, we did. You did nail like a uh, spot on with the the plane yelling at each other. Well, the plane flies over, so it's muted. Yeah, while they, I, while they were fighting, and I forgot to write down what Gar says at the very end. But he he says something about like pulling a pulling something out of somebody's butt or something like that. <laughs> uh, Garth playing with the donuts that was really funny. That was good. Yes, those donuts look totally missed that part. Those donuts look tasty. I want to eat them. And I still thought the the opening the door to like the ninja fighting was really funny. <laughs> Fantastic, it's so good. So he did mention the Twilight Zone episode oh, where he yeah. says doesn't that doesn't exist. A, <clears throat> right. Doesn't so he exist. said that a guy gets his tongue ripped out or cut out and then all this other stuff happens. Put in a jar and I it. will say there's an episode that's vaguely similar to that called The Silence. Okay. But it's not about a guy getting his tongue cut out. It's about a guy who 
cannot shut up. And so this guy bets him that he can't speak for an entire year. And if he doesn't speak for an entire year, he'll give him like $200,000 or something like that. And then the, the Twilight Zone reveal is after he has, he literally has not spoken for an entire year is that he cut his vocal cords. Oh, so he yeah. literally cannot speak so he can win this bet. But then the other twist is the guy that bet him thought he was going to win 100% and do, doesn't have the money right. to be able to pay off the bet. So there, it was not based on a real episode, <laughs> but it's it's some it's vaguely similar to that episode. Okay. I'll, I'll take your word for it. I know you're the Twilight Zone expert. So, How much money would it take you to not speak for an entire year? What would be the price um, tag? Oof. Give me a low end, the lowest end. The lowest end, probably five hundred thousand. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't have to work; you just stay, do whatever. Well, you'd have to. Well, no, you still have to work during the course. Yeah, of the like, bet. well, your job would require you Although, to talk. Although in right? the in the episode, that guy did not have to work. So the the guy that was doing the bet said, "You're gonna stay in my basement. You're gonna be in this enclosed, like kind of like glass." room oh. and uh so he's like kind of confined to this room the entire time and it had like speakers and recording stuff in case like he did talk so that he would be caught oh man i'd go a hundred thousand yeah. really yeah okay all right i'll let you know when i get there <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say. make this arbitrary just raise that up yeah, now yeah. and just give me a couple years Brad, shut up and i still stand by when he played the stairway to heaven that was not was, stairway to heaven two notes and i, I yeah it was, I, and they I didn't compared, even sound no, like the uh, song. Yeah, I totally agree. I compared. I was listening to that. I was listening to what he played. I was like, he plays three notes before the guy yells at him, and the third note is definitely not close to the stereo. None, of it, third none note. of it was even close to stereo. Didn't want to pay the rights. It was, it was not even close. Yeah. This movie had a lot of uh, <laughs> songs in it that had the license for the soundtrack. And, and Led Zeppelin was not a band that would license their songs the, away. Yeah, wasn't going to. I've read that before. They, they have n- refused so many different movies. Mm. Wasn't gonna happen. Not gonna not dead. Gonna <laughs> topical for this movie. Yeah. <laughs> not topical for this year. No. Oh, uh, if Benjamin were an ice cream flavor, he'd be pralines and dick is a joke that Garth makes. And I feel like that's just like... I brush that off as like a da- as, you know it's like an off day for them. <laughs> so I so I tried to I, I rewrote the joke. Uh, what, do you, what do you think of this one? Uh, if Benjamin were an ice cream flavor, he'd be custard. And no, no, okay, here we go. <laughs> cocoa nut. <laughs> Jamocha almond sludge. Uh, Rocky Roadkill. Okay, that one's pretty good. That, that one's okay. decent. Okay. 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 All right. That, okay, we, we wrote, we, we wrote <laughs> that joke. It was definitely like an ADR joke that they just threw in there. Garth isn't even facing Kurt, Kurt Fuller when he's saying this. <laughs> it's like, why did this... <laughs> Braylon's a dick. <laughs> and I also try to keep it, like, censored, because it's a PG-13 film. So like, you can say, like, shit and, you know, whatever. Braylon's oh, and... man. Mint chocolate yeah, that shit. Was, that was not a good joke. <laughs> I was just like, I don't know what dick. that is. I, I was just like, I don't know. All right. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't get that joke. There's also, uh, oh, at the beginning of the film when we first meet Stacy and she leaves and Wayne just yells at her as she's going, get a net. I don't know what that means. I'm going to say there are a couple times where I was like, is this slang? Like, I don't know what this means. Is it a Canadian joke? Is that why we're not getting it? That'd be my guess. I, I had like... to write down, like, and I've had this question many years, that, it, like, since I've seen it. What is up with the fishtail ending thing? Like, I have no idea what that means. Nope. No idea. I had to look it up, and I don't even know if I got, like, a correct answer. Just basically. Get a net. What Jesus. does that mean? <laughs> I don't. I still don't really understand what the fishtail ending is. If someone can explain it, look, Brad. If you don't understand, get a net. Then you get need, a net. You need a net. So I want to write a film about Laura Flynn Boyle's character going through this traumatic experience of this successful boyfriend who leaves you behind. He dates this other girl. And you're just like left a broken wreck of a you person. You fall through a skylight. Fight you through, yeah. crash into a car. Uh, just yeah. watch Twin Peaks then. It sounds that's vaguely character? similar. That's, <laughs> that's what happened to her after this movie. Yeah, and I thought she did a lot of like serious roles. This is one of the few comedy things, and I thought she nailed it. Yeah, the yeah, acting was really good. In, yep, I feel like she's not in a ton of movies, or just not a ton of movies that I'm aware of. Yeah, other than this one, maybe Happy Men in Black Two. 
Is she Men in Black too? Yeah, she plays the villain. Yeah, the evil oh. lady yeah. alien. Yeah, she doesn't really do much in the film. God, I didn't even know. But when she's uh, talking to Garth and Garth tell, like asks her what to do, and Garth like, just get over it, find someone else, and she repeats those lines. I really like felt like her. She was listening as an actress, <laughs> like, really taking in that whole journey that she was on. Yeah, it's it's almost as if like when he said that it was like something she had never considered before. <laughs> it was kind of funny. It was like a funny yeah. moment where she was like, "Whoa, wait a second! I have other opportunities. <laughs> I have options. I can a... explore other people." Oh, see, to me, it seemed like it was an immediately like she jumped to, "Oh yes, because that will make him jealous and want me back." Oh, because that's like because then she like takes him up to the roof and like makes out with that guy right by Wayne. But he you're doesn't right. Notice. You're yeah. That's that's very likely. And then falls through the sun. Yeah, she just falls through that skylight. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird bit and that's why she's in the uh, neck brace yes before she crashes into the car <laughs> while they're Wait, playing really? street hockey i thought that she oh okay for some reason i got it confused in my head and i thought she was in the neck brace before that no she was but in the I, neck I brace i must have just like totally forgot that she fell through the yeah. ceiling <laughs> yeah yep. yeah yeah that, okay that's a thing a nice plate glass lands on the couch with the sick guy we did kind of forget the whole hockey scene no i, I mentioned oh, we it. did yeah i mentioned it okay I knew that was in there because I just remember like the game on. Yeah, they, and, so they like, keep moving the net. Yep. It's right. just something you did as a kid when yeah. you were. Oh, yeah. I did this uh, all the time. Last week? Did you do it? Did <laughs> you play hockey outside? More like did yesterday. It's oh. more at morning. Oh. I, I did it. What? <laughs> I just stand in the road and say that. Are you playing with yourself? Not, you, yeah, you have like hey, no other people. This is this is not an adult podcast, Brad. Don't, don't talk like that. Is it PG? It's PG. Yeah? You don't like talking about playing with yourself? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the PG-13 rating in the 90s? What do so you that, think about that? Um, I think they, it, they didn't so, curse at all, really, in this. No. Did, did this movie deserve a PG-13 rating? Why did they disting, distinguish between the two, like PG and PG-13 in the 90s? I thought it was just swearing and, like, sex, sex I guess, like, her Cassandra... Talk. Cassandra like, wears some, like, skimpy stuff. Yeah, but so does Mike Myers. You see his butt. And right in the beginning, Rob Lowe's in bed with a lady... And then uh, at Eating one point pizza. they put on the scene they put on the screen gratuitous sex scene. So, oh. you know. so it was very naughty. Was it Sphincter Boy? What was? The oh one? yeah, Sphincter Boy. What was the one too many lines <laughs> that they were just like, all right, we're gonna have to make a PG thirteen film. They were like, that's the one that made it a thirteen. Hmm. It, I don't know. And did it matter as much back then? Because like we really try to hit P- the PG thirteen. Like Suicide Squad was PG thirteen because you get the widest audience, right? Yeah. Was that a yeah. concern? As much because I feel like already the films were a lot happened a lot more in uh, the nineties, right? So were they really trying to not like really raise the bar for a PG thirteen film? I don't or, know. I mean, it could have. I'm just saying it could have been a PG it, film. It's also like would have been completely up to the discretion of um, the MPAA the, at the yeah, time. The yeah, the rating system. But. I definitely feel like it's it's the sexual situations bit that pushed it. I think to the 13 because there's a couple scenes where people are in underwear. Yeah, and Mike Myers. Mike Myers. Butt. Is, yep, you see his butt. Like I feel like that's why it's a 13. I feel like there's also just I mean, like a lot of like goofy like. Slang. There's no drug references, really. The guy's like drunk, ever like you think, or he's. But they don't. Yeah, you don't ever but... see him drink or yeah. anything like that. So it's not that. You just say his party's at partied out. Yeah, I just don't. I just don't know. I just don't think it. I think it should have been. Could have been rated PG. And pralines and dick. I Pr- mean pralines and dick. <laughs> There's that is the PG thirteen <laughs> right there. <laughs> Was that the PG thirteen? Yeah, that might have right done it in. <laughs> They're like, if, of of all the things in this movie, if you'd just taken out pralines and dick. There, there wasn't any of, like, the direct, like, offensive words, like, bitch, shit, ass, like, stuff like that. It was all, like, more well, goofy now things. Now our like, podcast is getting a freaking rating. Explicit. Up. Yeah, oh, I mean, oh, no. You should now. just bleep all those out. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, there are, like, weirder things like Sphincter Boy, like you had said, or <laughs> yeah, Dick. Was... I don't know. I feel like maybe that was enough to, to be PG-13. But they didn't go, like, overboard. Are we going to watch Overboard next? Ooh. Oh, how do you remember that movie? <laughs> oh, I remember that film. I remember the birthmark, so I got that down. I'll write that yeah. down. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's it. Baby. That's it. <laughs> Join us on our next episode. We're going to be talking about John Carpenter's They Live. Right now, if you go to whatremember.com, we have t-shirts for sale. Go to the merchandise tab. Use code NEWYEAR17 to get 20% off a t-shirt. Valid until January 12, 2017. It's a soft tee 
we've got a prototype of the shirt. We think it looks good and feels good. So that code again, New Year 17. Get 20% off a What Remember logo t-shirt. Whatremember.com. Oh, hi, Russell. How's it going? Hold it right there. Hey, hey. Hey, watch what where you putting that thing. <laughs> Give me a flashlight, Russell. Give it to me. You can help us, Russell. No. I'm not supposed to stop you. <laughs> what, what, what are you going to do? You're going to be Benjamin's monkey boy the rest of your life? Is that it? Benjamin's my friend. No. Benjamin is no one's friend. If Benjamin were an ice cream flavor, he'd be pralines and dick.